<laughs> so I do my best, my best Matt impression. It's always with a sigh too. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna screw this up today. <laughs> I'm gonna cuss at it, but I'm gonna only say fricking. Yeah. And I'm not gonna strip any bolts, but I might lose a few. Yes. No, okay. You ready? <laughs> All right, Mike, I'm ready. Okay. All right, so Matt's going away to go look at houses that he's gonna buy for Destination Obsessed Garage. And while he's gone, I'm gonna install American Racing headers on this. It's kind of late in the day, it's Tuesday, I don't know, three o'clock. So I'm gonna kind of get it set up on the lift, maybe start taking a look at it, pulling some panels, what have you. But anyway, we're gonna do the full American Racing headers and exhaust on it. Hopefully, get it done tomorrow. Yeah, it's down here. Everything else is down there. This is the hidden parts. This is the hidden parts. Uh, I wanted to install the big brake kit, but Matt says, no, wait for me. I want to do it with you because he wants to touch it and feel it and get the satisfaction. But the suspension is not here anyway, so we'll probably do this with suspension. So anyway, so he's gone. I don't have a whole. I've already finished all the other projects, so we're going to do this. And he's excited because he said, I can't wait to come back and drive it with the new exhaust. So anyway, it'll be fun. Mike, you're gonna help me, right, Mike? That's right, Mike. You're gonna help me, okay? You can hold this, do that. Yeah, hey, Mike, I, I dropped the bolt. Can uh, you grab it? I've done this job once with Ed. Oh, uh, Ed, that's right. Okay. Well, we'll see. Should be fun. All right, let's do it. using an impact on these nice lugs on a stud kit. I just like breaking them loose with a breaker bar and doing them by hand. I feel like the impact hits hard enough that it might ding them. And these are black titanium, black coated titanium. I just think they're too nice to hit with an impact. Some little things might. Yeah, if it was my car, I wouldn't use an impact, so I'm gonna do it on Maddie's. He's been known to be particular. Maybe not as particular as me. Oh, particular. You know, I wouldn't put this socket in my car, for instance. He keeps it in the car. It would rattle. I wouldn't like that. I would keep it in my toolbox or, you know, with the sockets and just put, you know, Maddie's socket on there, you know? But no, just in case he gets a flat. I'm going to show him. I'm going to tell him that. I just let him know, hey, listen, man, I don't think you want to keep this in the car. I know if you get a flat tire, you're not going to let anybody change it on the side of the road anyway. You're going to tow it back here and do it. So. No reason to have this in the car. So, my selection, what I'm gonna, what I think I'm gonna use as far as Milwaukee stuff, I'm gonna use a quarter inch ratchet, three eighths ratchet, half inch stubby, three eighths and quarter. So this is, and then I'll probably be using a lot of hand tools because the headers are a pain in the butt to get through the bolts. So I work around shrouds and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna move everything that's easy to get off out of the way so I can get my hands in there because I don't have small hands so I'll do what I can do take my watch off we'll pull some covers now we're getting late in the day anyway so we'll pull a few covers off yeah it's already 315 so and then we'll we'll uh, kind of see from there tomorrow we'll attack it go after it All right, so I got the uh, reinforcement plate off, this shield that covers the transmission. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug all, unplug all the O2 sensors, the pre-cat and post-cat sensors, get those unplugged, and then I'll pull this, this cross brace off, and then I'll pull the stock exhaust off, at least up to, obviously up to the flanges where the, where the factory headers come down. Get that out of the way, and then we can start, I'll probably lower the car back down, Get as much as I need to off, t off the top, probably pull the heat shields and uh, then start working on trying to get the headers loose. And then I'm gonna eventually have to drop the subframe, which is well, why I took the wheels off. 
make it a little bit lighter and then I'll get some, I think we have some pipe stands somewhere around here and I'll kind of help support the subframe off pipe stands, get some clearance so I can get my hands in there. You can get to one bolt easily. The rest, no. They're all gonna be a pain in the butt. Cause these, uh, these, these headers are like, I think they're equal length cause they're, they're super spaghetti. They're on the back cylinder. And then the rest are pretty well tough to get to. No. What are you doing there, Mike? Putting a little bit of WD-40 in these hangers. They slide off easier, more easily. I gotta watch my grammar. Someone's gonna correct me. Get the rest away with the pry bar. Okay, we're good there, clear there. Okay, all right, okay. Wow, look at you, Mike, yeah, filming and helping at the same time. Because you're, you're a Mike, Mike. Thank you. We should just leave it like this for Matt. Yeah, <laughs> get back. Man, Matt, it's rowdy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, loud. pretty loud, Matt. You know, Mike, it's not, not my favorite position to be in with my arm getting all scraped up, but you know, because I love Matt so much, I'm taking one for the team. Okay, I think that's the last bolt for this heat shield. <sighs> I have one more, two more heat shields to take off still, the upper pieces. Let's get those off. The last bolt's off the headers. Drop the subframe enough so I can slide the headers out. Yeah. This is a pretty easy project, you'd say? Easy? Yeah. <laughs> I would say no. <laughs> I would say if you don't mind your hands getting all jacked up, Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you have a, you don't want to do it on your driveway in the heat of the Florida sun with bugs crawling off of you, no big deal. It's easy, easy. Yeah. Slides an air conditioning in here. It's pretty, pretty good. So if people are trying to watch this for a DIY. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. Trust me, they're there. I cannot show you, but they're there. You just have to take them out, yeah. I got my cookie, Mike. <laughs> hey, that's a chocolate chip, mac white chocolate macadamia, Mike. That's for when I need a little bit more, you know, energy and my unsweetened tea. So I compensate the unsweetened tea with a nice sweet cookie. <laughs> Two, sweets <is laughs> Two sweets too much. I'm not mad. One more to get, and then uh, we can lower the subframe and pull them both out. But yeah, that's that's, that's what that's that's what it's looking like, Mike. I, my hands don't fit in these tight spaces very well. Look at it. Look at this. Look at the coolant line there, Mike. It's it's DNA all over it over there. Some good stuff there, Mike. Oh gosh. Yeah. Is it from this? It's from this here clamp, I'm sure. Crime scene. You know, it's just it's just it's just uh, not meant for this size hands. All right. Some additional support here with the, our bottle jacks. Just so it doesn't just come crashing down. And we've got the motor supported with our... I think that's going to do it. I think that's pretty close, Mike. Yeah. I'll uh, you hold the camera, Mike, and uh, <laughs> see what happens here. That, huh? So look at that crazy looking unit. That's pretty intense. Right? Equal length. You know? So you were saying, I mean, stock headers are not that bad. Stock headers are really good. They're, I mean, that's, but they don't have the same sound as these. I know that. So we'll be uh, upgrading that. But these are, yeah, these are, as headers go, they're pretty darn nice as stock headers. So what I'm doing is I took the studs out on the top part of the top uh, holes on the exhaust ports and I'd left the bottom ones in 
because the way these are set up is they're slotted here. So it's meant to drop in and you can't get to these nuts to start them. They're be literally behind tubes. So the way the gasket and the header both are set up is it's meant to drop in like this. Well, if these studs are in, it won't drop in. And it, there's not enough angle to tuck it in like that. Well, at least the gasket there is, but not the header. So I took all the studs out on the top. I'm gonna drop this in like this and the header in, and then I can get, uh, put the studs in after and tighten everything down. That's, that's the theory. So that's what I'm doing. It's gonna be hard to get to. There's still, the nuts are still behind the tubes to tighten them, to tighten them. but at least they're started because this side, I tried doing it the normal way, which was just to slide it on and install all the nuts. And I can't get my hands in there to start the nuts, not my fat hands. So how are we gonna tighten them then? So I'm gonna take that one off and do exactly what I did here, because it only took 10 minutes to put on. Yeah, but as far as tightening the Oh, nuts. I don't know, that's, gonna, that's, <laughs> that's, <nuts>. that's another day. <laughs> no, we'll worry about that tomorrow. Mike, where we are is headers are in, they're all bolted up. Needless to say, that is the heart of the job. It's getting the nuts, every, access to every nut and getting them properly torqued so you don't get exhaust leaks. I don't know how to express how much of a pain it is to get to some of these nuts. It literally is a, a 12th of a turn and it takes about a minute between turns to get the wrench back on the nut. Um, some of them are nearly inaccessible, but you know, you persevere. Little hand wounds and arm wounds, and yeah, this right there. That's from that's from Friday. This is from Friday. And today it's more like you know just this redness and such. But you know what? You get past it. You know, take one for the team. <laughs> if I didn't love Matt so much, I'd have caught this car on fire. Anyway, we have to use the camera some. yeah, so some of some we had to use the little scope camera in Milwaukee. Um, yeah, so I'm just right now got the subframe uh, hanging by two of the bolts um, and I'm going to lower the car, lift the motor up some more so that I can put the uh, there's some spacers that go between the motor mount and the uh, subframe and I can uh, I'll show you when I get it when I get the motor lifted up a little bit. I'll show you their quarter inch spacers that go between the two for clearance. Apparently there's I mean it's 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 close anyway, so this gives a little more. So once we do that, get the motor buttoned up, I'll uh, bolt the subframe back up and then we'll start putting the rear section exhaust back in, put the wheels on, intake back on, and basically we're done. spacer that we're putting in. It's about it's probably a little over a quarter. That's gonna lift the motor because the subframe bolts to the you know the body of the car, right? So the motor, the subframe's fixed, so what it'll do is lift the motor up a quarter of an inch. Which should give the headers clearance from whatever they were going to hit. Motor mount spacer. They now this this system does not come with instructions. So we had the motor mount sitting off of the subframe. So I put the motor mount, put the spacer between the subframe and the motor mount. It didn't look right to me because the nut only had about half the threads it should. So I decided that can't be where it goes. So I decided that it's got to go between the aluminum cast piece mount that comes off the block to the top of the rubber mount. So it's got to go between those two. So I'm moving the, moving the spacer up there instead. Now you get the idea, there it is. There she is, <laughs> there's the motor mount. So what, we, what I had was I had it on this side and there wasn't enough poking through. So it's really got to go on that side. 
which makes more sense now that I can have it out. You can see it's perfect size, so. Hey, Mike, can I go, go, can I go back to doing some construction stuff after this? Because my neck's starting to hurt from looking up so much. You're off the hook. I'm off the hook, Mike. I don't, I, guess what? Matt said, I'm off the hook. I don't have to go to Smokies with him to look at houses. I can just get work, put the headers on the M3. Thanks, buddy. Matt, if you're watching, I love you for letting me do this. Thank you very much. I feel gifted. So now I'm just buttoning up the subframe, torque it down. We'll put the wheels back on, and then we can put the rear section of the exhaust on. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna stay on the lift though, because we're gonna do the carbon ceramics probably this week and the uh, suspension if it shows up, so good stuff. So the reinforcement plate obviously doesn't clear anymore because we got the headers that run quite a bit lower than stock. So what I have to do is I threw a couple bolts in, one in each corner, brought it up just so it's just touching the headers. I'm on market, and then we're gonna have to do some trimming. I could use a cutoff wheel on it, but they don't like cutting aluminum so well. Probably use the jigsaw. So fine metal blade in it. I got to put a battery in her. But yeah. Oh gee, absolutely. Absolutely. We just have suspension and carbon ceramic brakes to do. How many hours to get this done? 16. 16 hours. Yeah. <laughs> and lots of ouches on my hands. If you had half the size hands and arms, then maybe you could do it faster. I mean, we, to be totally honest, Friday I was sick, so you could do it in less. I just was not myself. I was kind of dragging a little bit. I was dragging. I had the flu. <laughs> I was slacking. Come on, Mike. You can't say slacking. Anyway, yeah, that was, uh, it was fun. Sounds like your old one. Yeah, it has the uh old star on it. Yep. Okay. I've been saying I'm like, man, it was never it was never that loud before. Yeah, <laughs> pretty loud cold start. Yeah. Sweet. I think that's a wrap. Sounds like the old one. 
Alrighty, everyone. The now 900 mile, I'm going to stop calling it the 800 mile M3 because it's now a 900 mile M3, is now road worthy. Still don't have a suspension yet, but we've got some noise. Oh, and we took the clutch spring off, which makes the clutch operate so much better. So I'm just going home tonight. Back to the seat a little bit here. I'm just going home tonight and I'm going to go cruise around, take the long way home, and we'll. Uh, Catch you up a little bit on the old uh, OD92. So American Racing headers are installed. Mike just did them. So this is my maiden voyage with them. My uh, friend Alex from Alpine uh, MSS just did the uh, tune. So there might be a little bit of ad adaptation time. Uh, but we've got the uh, CEL tuned out and the power band smoothed out a bit. We got the intake all set up. So we're uh, we're looking pretty good here. The M3 is coming together. Uh oh, Mike messed up my steering. So there's a, you have to take the uh, steering knuckle off in order to do the headers. We'll have to make some tweaks. But there's only one way to do this. Anytime you modify a car, you gotta start playing with it. Let's put it in MDM mode. So I had coded in Euro MDM. And oh yeah, the steering wheel's way off. So Euro MDM set up. Now we need a uh, suspension. Oh, it sounds so much better. Ugh, I've been driving the uh horrible clutch on the M2. It'll take me a little while to get used to the E92 again. We got some, we got a ways to warm this sucker up. The windows down sound. So the magic of this exhaust is there's no drone. There's just nasty. And then when you're cruising on the highway, no drama you know so you can put it in you know fourth gear here i'm going you know, 30 miles an hour and even in fourth gear 30 no drone just exhaust note not any of the baggage it's beautiful this is a terrible time to go out and drive around because we get to ride behind everybody but I just wanted to capture it on camera. Why not? No, you guys like any any cheats you can get a little M3 footage. We all we all like getting some getting some M3 footage. So right now I have BBS FIRs. I'm breaking my own rule, which is to always lower before you put wheels on. I just wanted to get everything cleaned up. So I uh, just threw these wheels on, and I had a leaky tire, so I had to replace the TPMS fix that. Is that a leaky a leaky valve stem? It's really nice having your own tire machine. You can just go in and fix that. This is good. We needed to putt around anyway to warm up warm up the car. But I have PS4S's 26530 19 in the front, 29530 19 in the rear, so a 30 millimeter stagger, which feels good on the car. A little more grip in the front. A lot more grip in the rear, but not such a huge stagger. You know, one of the problems is you get too big of a rear wheel if the car isn't set up that way. I just feel like it doesn't doesn't steer right, doesn't handle properly. So I'm going to get the clutch stop, and then I have an ultimate clutch pedal coming. So, and we'll put the uh, Dynan you know pedal covers on here as well. Why are we going 35 miles an hour on this backcountry road? We'll come back around and go that way. missed it. It's only been a few months, but I'm going to do a it doesn't get much better than that, fellas. And lady or two. I get 
like mess my steering wheel up it's pointing to the right you have to like I said you have to remove the steering column to get clearance to get the uh, get the exhaust in place I'm doing much better driving though like right now we're at you know 5 30 p.m. traffic I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just driving so I'm feeling really good like I'm 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 going to the mountains in 10 days or so I'm hoping I can kind of break this curse that's been plaguing me the last couple of years. Get back, you know, on the streets, not just this road. That sure would be the darn dream. I'm not going to take that for granted. Yeah, the uh, FIRs, I don't think I like them. I really like the RIDs. I'm gonna see, did they make an RID, the ones that are on the M2, in offsets for this car? They need to be a half inch wider. Got some horsepower again. Oh man, this car is so good. Could you imagine this thing with a Dynan Stroker? Should I do it? At 905 miles now. Should we send it with less than a thousand miles? It hasn't even gotten into break-in. Don't give it. We'll just pretend like I didn't hit hit the rev hit red line on uh, at 900 miles. Well, you BMW dorks. I don't understand how you could possibly. It's also a little different for me in that I, you know, I have all these cars and I, don't, I can't drive anywhere, so I don't put any miles on them. But I'm just freaking driving it like normal, right out of the box. Just vary the RPMs, you're good to go. So I don't really subscribe to the drive it too aggressively, but just drive it like you normally would. You know, some people would subscribe to the drive it super hard right out of the box, which seat the piston rings I don't I don't do that but all right let's do a couple of pulls here it's making easily 30 horsepower I'd say closer to 50 with the tune yeah tune. it just feels the car just feels so much faster Intake, tune, pulleys, exhaust, headers, catless, 50, 60 horsepower maybe. I mean, I might be, might be um, pushing my luck on that prediction, but 40, 50. I have to remember, I don't, I don't have Brembo's right now. I've got stock brakes. the silk shoot that was smooth sailing I want to jack up my lip so much. I love it even more since it's a 900 mile masterpiece. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> oh. Other 
than the tips being, you know, old man looking, regular, polished, stainless, it is a gosh darn masterpiece. It's the best exhaust system by far. Unless you're in a place where you got to get emissions done. I think, I think they have a high flow cat version though that you probably should be able to get by. So, um, Olin's TTX, we'll get this sucker low, low as it, as it should be, sit, sit like it should, but Barry's telling me from 3DM, he's telling me the thing, the, the way that he set these things up, springs, proper valving, it's going to ride better than stock, better than a road and track setup, and the road and track I had on this before was amazing. So I'm hoping... Certainly gonna look pretty. Oh, you're gonna go straight and mess me up. Gotta love the Euro MDM, it'll let you slide around a little bit. These tires are brand new, it still has like the sticky stuff on them. But then you can just tame it up and chill. Oh, it's so much better without the clutch spring. Oh, my auto solution short shifter kit will be here in a week or two as well. I'm excited for that. I thought I had an auto solution short shifter kit. I just remembered the shift shifter being, you know, because when I remember when I, well, not, oh, I not remember, but when I first got, I remember when I first got my E92 M3 in 2010, I had an S2000 at the same time. So the S2000 was my daily car, and then this was my, you know, was my dream car, my baby. And so the, the you know, I went from S2000 to this, so the shifter felt terrible. And then when I got my 2013, when I got it in, in 2018, the, the, the giveaway car, I was like, man, this must have a short shifter on it. I just, it wasn't great, but I, I did just remember it being even worse. And so I never did a short shifter on on the on the giveaway car. And so this then I got this one. I'm like, no, this feels exactly the same. So I don't have a short shifter after all. So all that talking, really, I, I'm gonna get a short shifter for the first time in this car. beautiful people. I just feel, I can't tell you how weird I feel in that I've got BBSs on here and it's not lowered. I feel like I'm breaking the, the law. <laughs> I'm breaking the laws of car, car guy modification physics. Certainly can't heel toe with these Jordans on. So good, people. Let's get a dining stroker. Let's say this, if the M2 giveaway does really well, let's put a number on it, then we'll we'll send it to um, out to California and get dining stroker done. What do you think? that ran over my uh, my uh, septic tank. Just do a little spinneroo here. Good news about the BBSs is, is they don't rub. At least not at stock height. It's something we'll 
traction control. It's like traction control turned off. So MVM mode. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna keep this sucker. <laughs> it's awesome. Awesome, awesome. I just like having this car. I like driving around town. Like, I, I don't know that, I, I don't know that I would love, I don't know that I'd love having this in the mountains. I'm sure I'll take it up there, especially if we get the house that I'm working on getting right now in Helen. But I don't, I don't know. I like it here. I just like how this car looks when you're rolling around. It's just, it's not crazy fast. Doesn't handle extremely well. It's just good. It's just a, a nice, even, balanced car. Bad news, I don't have any traction control. Let's not crash right before we get to a thousand miles. Bad time to make a video, but I just wanted to get a little quick little, little cruise around with you. What else could we talk about? E36 is also getting Olin's TTX. I cheaped out on the M2 and uh, did uh, old road and track, largely because I couldn't get TTX in time. I've been waiting six months for the TTX stuff to all come together. And uh, Barry had the road and track. He revalves it, re-springs with different you know, custom springs, especially for the rear, because the standard road and track kit, he says, is, isn't great for the M2, so he makes it much better. I don't care how much faster the M2 is, I would take this any day. I love this hammer. So I'm close. I'm making it on. Uh, we're, we should iron out a price on the house in the Helen, Helen, Georgia, to do the uh, OG spec um, destination OG retreat that we're about to build. Fascinating. You can still 295s, sticky tires, and they still slide and slide around on you with only 400 horsepower. I'd say probably somewhere around 400 wheel horsepower. And 200 and say 280, 290 foot pounds of torque, something like that. So that's a wrap. I'm gonna pull into the house and this car will not be sitting outside. The Tesla's coming out. Oh, you'll be like this. I bought a shed today. <laughs> yeah. Bought a tw 10 by 12 shed. It's gonna go back in the woods back there so you won't see it. Check out the new color of our house. Looks so much better. So that's a wrap. I'll see you guys, uh, see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Love this M3. Love it, love it, love it. Talk to you soon.